Welcome back to the channel. Today, I want to talk about something that affects a lot of new entrepreneurs or people who are learning new skills or doing something meaningful in their life, and that is imposter syndrome. Now, imposter syndrome, it affects anybody who is starting something new and feeling uncomfortable. It's that feeling of, I'm a fraud. I can't be doing this because I'm not the best in the world at this. And people who feel this, a lot of times they stop doing the thing that they're doing because they feel like an imposter. So I think it's important to talk about this. I've been getting a lot of comments on my channel of, how do I deal with this feeling of not being the best? I feel like I'm a fraud. I don't know if I should continue doing this. And I can relate. It's something that I've struggled with for a long time. It's something that I struggle with today still. Whenever I'm learning a new skill or I'm doing something new, there's always that feeling and voice in the back of my head of, well, you're not the best in the world at this. What right do you have to help somebody else with this? And I wanna talk about some tips that have helped me to manage this feeling and to, to overcome this feeling of being an imposter and also give you a few ways to think about this so that you are able to, to go into this new skill or this new business or whatever you're doing in your life with a newfound energy and without feeling like you're a fraud or an imposter all the time. So first thing is everybody starts off as an imposter. I know that sounds weird, but if you think about someone like Jeff Bezos who started Amazon, one of the biggest companies in the world, it started off as an online bookstore. It wasn't this company that sold everything. So Jeff Bezos, do you think he knew he was gonna build the, one of the biggest companies in the world? Probably not. I mean, maybe he, he had that as a goal, but that didn't start off. Amazon didn't start off as the biggest company in the world. So in some ways, Jeff Bezos was an imposter in the beginning. So everybody starts off this way, and it's just learning how to manage and think about this and use it to fuel you instead of just using it as a way or an excuse to not do this thing that you're working on. So it's your responsibility as a human being to share your ideas, to learn new things, and to share what you're learning with the world. At least that's my opinion. So what I wanna do here is share with you three ways that I was able to overcome imposter syndrome, or at least what I use, this, this mindset that I use to manage this feeling of being an imposter. So let's jump into these three things right now. So the first tip for overcoming imposter syndrome is to first imitate and then innovate. And I learned this from a guy named David Perel. I follow him on Twitter, brilliant writer, and he talks about this a lot is, the greatest people in the world at every single thing didn't start off as innovators. They first started imitating somebody else who was an expert in the field, and then they formed their own style and their own way of doing things after they started first imitating that person. So for example, I get a lot of people asking me, like, how did you get good at writing and copywriting and email marketing and all these things that I do now? I didn't start off as the top in the world at it. I'm still not the top in the world at it. But the way that I started off was I would find letters and emails from some of the top marketers in the world and copywriters, and I would just literally hand copy their letters and hand copy their emails so that I could have it imprinted in my brain and learn about how they were doing it, how their style of writing, what they were doing, how were they transitioning from sentence to sentence. And by just literally hand copying, I have notebooks on my shelf here of just hand copied notes and letters I was able to learn the structure of good copy and good emails. And it just stuck with me from hand copying for months. So after writing hundreds and hundreds of sales letters and emails from some of the, the greats in the industry, I started to get a better feeling of writing in the flow and how things were supposed to work. And from there, I was able to create my own stories and my own style and my own form of writing. But it was only first starting off from imitating the greats that I was able to figure out, okay, this is how these, the sentence structure goes. This is how the flow of emails or a sales letter goes. And this is how you can create your own tone and create your own voice. So some of the greatest artists in the world have done this as well. And some of the greatest sports players, right? Kobe Bryant modeled his gameplay after Michael Jordan when he first got started. And eventually throughout his career, he got better and better. And he had his own style, his own killer instinct. But it all started off imitating MJ. So that's tip number one, is to first imitate, then innovate. So tip number two is just because something is easy to you or obvious to you doesn't mean it's obvious to other people. So the tip is to value what you do. And it's funny because the better and faster that we get at doing something, the less that we tend to value it. And we start to think like, oh, this is so easy for me, it's, it's boring. It's boring because it, I can do this in my sleep. And we start to get into this habit of thinking if it's boring and easy to me and obvious to me, it must be this way for everybody else. And that's how I was with a lot of my stuff, right? Writing emails and writing sales pages, I thought it would, would be obvious to everybody and creating offers, but it's not. So I have a student who started writing emails 10 months ago, started from scratch, and now he's pretty good at writing emails. He writes for small e-commerce brands, 
And we were having a conversation about a week ago and he just asked me, it feels weird and unethical for me to charge for this because I'm able to do this so fast now. It, it comes a lot easier for me. I can write an email in 20 minutes. Should I be lowering my prices? And that was interesting because we tend to undervalue these things that we get good at. When we get better and faster, we should be charging more. We should be valuing it more because people are looking for this thing that they can't do, but you can do. So just because something is easy or obvious to you doesn't mean it's the same way for everybody else. So that's the second tip is to value what you do, especially if it feels easy and obvious to you because chances are it's not easy and obvious to everybody else. The third tip, and this one is huge. This one really affected the way that I think about everything that I do. And it's just this, this mindset of you're just a third grader helping a second grader, okay? A third grader helping a second grader. So you don't have to be the number one expert in your field. You don't have to be a college professor to help out a second grader, right? You just have to be one grade ahead and help them take that next step. So whether you're doing services or coaching or you run an online course, just think of it like the third grader helping the second grader. Now, of course, you should know what you're talking about, but you as long as you're able to help a second grader get a result and take that step up to the third grade where you're at and maybe from there you go to fourth grade that's all that you need you don't have to be a college professor with all these fancy degrees and awards and achievements to help somebody who's all the way back in the second grade right in fact it's probably bad if a professor were to go to the second grade and leave this big old textbook with calculus and algebra on the desk of a second grader who's just trying to learn multiplication for the first time so this is the way that I think about it now, right? If, can I help someone get a meaningful result? Can I help them go from second grade to third grade? If I can, I'm totally fine with moving forward and helping them, right? Whether it's a service or a coaching or a course, I'm, I'm just a third grader helping a second grader. So a good example of this is a guy named Tony Robbins. You probably know who that is. He doesn't have any personal development degrees in psychology or psychiatry or whatever it is, yet he's worth $600 million and has probably helped more people than psychologists and psychiatrists and self-help gurus. So Tony Robbins, he just went out and there's a story early in his career where someone said, you don't have these degrees, you don't have all these awards. How are you qualified to help these people? He said, well, I just know how to help them and I wanna help as many people as possible. And he went out and did it. Now he's worth over half a billion dollars. So you don't have to be the number one person in your field to help somebody. It doesn't matter what you do. You're just a third grader helping a second grader out. And that's the way that you should think about everything that you're doing that could help somebody else get a meaningful result in their life. Just think of it as a third grader helping a second grader. So those are my three tips for getting over imposter syndrome. These three tips helped me to overcome imposter syndrome and to manage it. Tip number one is to first imitate, then innovate. You're not gonna be the top innovator in a field when you're first starting out. So first, start off by imitating the greats and then innovate based on your own style, your own learnings. Tip number two is to value what you do. Just because it's easy and obvious to you definitely does not mean it's easy and obvious to everyone else. And tip number three is you're just a third grader helping a second grader. You don't have to be the college professor. You don't have to be the number one in your field to help somebody get a result and improve their life or their business in some way. So hopefully this helps you with overcoming imposter syndrome if you're struggling with that right now. This has really helped me to shift my mindset, allow me to take action and continue growing even during those times where I'm feeling like, well, maybe I'm not the best in the world. Maybe I should stop doing this because I'm not at the top of my field yet. It never happens that way. It only happens once you're moving along, you're, you're, you're taking the steps, and you're taking action on a consistent basis. So hopefully this helps you out. Give me a like if it did. Comment below what was most helpful out of these tips for you and what you're gonna be starting to do moving forward to overcome imposter syndrome. And that's it for this one. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.